Okay, now I'm going to show you how to work with more complex shapes. There are many ways to do it. You can do it using channels, paths, and all, uh, several tools here. I'm going to show you the way that I think is the simplest way to go about doing this, especially for vehicles where it's a, usually a mixture of elliptical and rectangular shapes. So you don't need to make too many uh, detailed curves and, and such but you're gonna see how this works and, and uh, if it works for you but it should now let's do something similar to what a hatch would look like so we have a elliptical shape like this I'm gonna create a new a new layer fill it with black now I suppose you have some different shape in here you you can always select it and change it coming here transform distort and you can adapt it to whatever shape you need okay don't worry too much about it being uh, symmetrical okay just do the shape from one side that looks good adapt the other one a little bit and that should be enough for you okay so usually you're gonna get have a reference of what you're doing if you have a reference then it works best for you suppose you have another shape here I'm gonna create another that goes like this you paint it in black and you have a rounded shape that unites the two so you go back to your round shape and you just make this shape here okay invert the selection so that you can paint and just paint it like so okay and then unselect and voila you have your shape suppose this is here is round you can do it again just do it like so put it there and <coughs> there you go and you can combine many shapes to create the basic shapes to create any complex shape you want so using simple shapes you can combine them and create anything you want now once you have done this here you can just grab half of it copy and paste delete this other one and then with this layer selected you just uh, duplicate it go here transform and vertical flip and then bring it down using the arrow keys so that you have both halves looking exactly the same alright merge down and there you go there you have your shape set a complex shape now how do you go about using this let's make a copy so that we don't make anything stupid with it now again our good old control U to make this lighter Okay. now you need to make this area here internal area of the hatch slightly darker how do you go about doing this uh, several ways of doing this suppose you're gonna use this one right and get this upper part and reduce it okay so you hold alt and shift and reduce it you see you have a problem here because it doesn't go around as we want it so this is going to be useless for us so what we're going to do is select this one go to select modify and contract and you're going to contract it by four pixels okay there you have it's contracted then you're going to use again Control u and make it darker inside okay but see how the edges are jagged so this is not what you want right so it can go to history if history is not here just come to windows history and just drag it to the bin all right go back to layers now before you work with this you just go to selection and go to feather and put feather at one pixel okay so this will give you a nice smooth transition right see 
So now you have this nice smooth transition. Now suppose you have a you carry on selecting this thing but now you need again a contour inside that goes like so. Contract but now we're going to use ten. Okay? But now you just need the line, a darker line that goes deep into this hatch. Okay? How do you go about doing this? Edit, stroke. You're going to make a stroke. Right? And this stroke is going to be two inches. Right? There you have it. Brilliant. Now again your stroke is a bit mm, not exactly what you wanted it to be but since it's all black you can always select it expand the selection by one pixel let's expand it by two pixels and then apply a filter a blur Gaussian blur more or less how much do you want to blur you can you have full control here of how much you want to blur this okay then you have your nice contour there then you can add those same techniques that we used with the other one for this one so there is no uh, problem doing all those things you can but always use don't do like I did here all, all in the same layer I just did this because I wanted to show you how this works but if you do it in different layers you have a lot more control like for instance I'm going to do another shape here I suppose there was a, another shape in here you see when you don't use different layers you run into the risk you run the risk of uh, destroying what's underneath now let's make this one a stroke again two peaks pixels and there you go there you have it but then if I don't like it or if I want it to be not so strong I always have control over this great now I'm gonna duplicate this make it lighter a lot lighter brilliant so I have two and now what I'm gonna do is using my eraser set to less I'm gonna I want light here and dark here so I'm gonna start erasing this and look what I get okay so again the same principles apply to this so you can do any shape you like using those same principles look how you get uh, a feeling of uh, volume so you can add a volume to the center, you can do whatever using these uh, techniques. So you can combine the techniques, you can change them, use them backwards, whatever. Now you know a lot of tools and you know some principles that hopefully will help you creating new textures. And look at the textures that came with Combat Mission Shock Force as an example of what you can do you can use photographs you can mix painting like this with photographs you can use photographs sometimes with very low resolution as a guide for you to paint so you have to use all resources you have at hand to create those textures and that's about it for this tutorial i, f I hope you liked it thank you for watching it